Hello, freak bitches. Because you're, we're going way, way, way back. The, the real issue, this is like a year before, more than a year before yeah. everything went sideways. Oh, we're yeah. Talking about. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So what, what went sideways and why? Okay. So you're this super progressive vegan guy, but what went sideways? So um, an ex of mine, um, an ex of mine, uh, I'm trying to think about like how much I can say, um, started... Um, it was weird, like, uh, girls I was dating, like, she would kind of, like, pop up and be, like, following them on, like, social media, and I kind of was like, all right, it's a little weird. Um, girls you were dating, but you were married at the time. So, what was also not talked about in these articles is that for the last however many years before um, Alice and I got separated, we were in an open relationship. We just didn't, we talked about it on the show eventually, but for a while we didn't talk about it. Um, and... Which to anyone in a fucking open relationship, like it's a nightmare when you're not talking about it because you feel like a, a lecherous, cheating creep because uh, you're in an open relationship. But I mean, you don't talk about it. So then when girls meet you and you tell them, yeah, you an go, open relationship, I'm in like, a, yeah, right. Yeah, totally. When you go, right. I'm in a secret open relationship. Yeah. They're like, you're full of shit. Right. right. Um, and so, you know, I like kind of did the road thing, but like felt like a fucking creep. And the road thing meaning hook up with girls. Yeah, in the yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, and then, uh, you know, I was finally just like, we have to talk about it. And at this point, and I don't want to shit on anybody. Uh, you know, at this point, um, you know, my co-host and I, we were like, we were pretty much just like really good friends, right? Who lived together and did a show together. And. Um, so years later, years after um, me and this girl broke up, years after um, all this shit, I'm living in L.A. Um, I have a, I've had a girlfriend for a year. It's like a very healthy, wonderful relationship. Um, years after all this, I guess what happened was one of these girls um, essentially started to try to find any girl who has been pissed off by me before. And they found enough for an article that um, I think like two articles came out. Um, I left Citizen Radio because the show was getting a ton of complaints um, because our inner circle started to find out that there were quote unquote accusations, which the word accusation makes it sound Weinstein-y. Um, accusations of. So that's what. It, so this they, is. They were saying, but there was it was very unspecific what I read. They said predatory behavior. Yeah. And I was like, oh, meaning he's trying to get laid. That's what a man does. Like, he, not predatory in the sense of you're victimizing someone no. or raping someone or no. doing something horrible to someone or even. And this is when my own words kind of bit me in the ass because you. I spent an entire year. Uh, or years being like, you know, uh, hashtag believe women. And then you read that and you go, ah, hashtag don't believe women. Like you don't know what to right. do. And like, I, I, I was always like, if you call a girl who accuses you, uh, uh, you know, crazy, you're just projecting and like, you're trying right. to, and then suddenly I'm reading this article. I'm like, this is fucking crazy. And I didn't, uh, okay, all of my stuff. Hold on, one article. Are you talking about the Jezebel So there's a Jezebel, article? yeah, there's a Jezebel article and. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Oh my man, I, uh. It was really bad, and I read it for the first time, and I don't want to go into details because I don't want to shit on people who, like, feel like they were, um, you know, hurt or whatever. Um, but um, I'll, a good majority of the article isn't even fucking true. Um, there was one part where Jezebel even wrote it. Like, if, if we can make it about journalism. Well, let's not even say Jezebel because it's one woman who wrote it. There's several, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah totally. So, this, so the author, there's one moment in it, and I'll try to make this uh, about journalism and not about the the woman but one of the complaints about me was i had a consensual night um with a lady in nashville um who i guess because she like listened to the show maybe they're like that's predatory because you're like famous and i was like well no one else thinks i'm fucking famous uh but wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute the, they were defining it as predatory because you're famous <sighs> that's part of so it that, every time mick jagger gets laid it's predatory that's part of it that's what I don't, that's the thing. And what by the that? way, I, that, fucking call me, if I'm Mick Jagger famous, you can call me a fucking predator. If I'm, I can barely get a plus one to a vegan festival famous, like, don't, please do not call me a predator. Well, I mean, look, it's, there's levels to fame, right? And I know you're being self-deprecating and everything like that, but you did have a nice following and you did, I've totally. seen, I saw some of your videos online where you did big crowds. So it's yeah, not, no, I've it's not like people, you didn't have fans. No. Right? Um, so you did have fans, and, but, but the idea that, you 
liking some woman who's a fan and her liking you like that somehow or another you're a predator because she enjoys your work is crazy well is that I, how they were defining it because I don't know yes and then but then that it seems like they're being very convenient in their definition well and 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 that was part of it there was like uh, uh, um, there was another one where it was like yeah the predatory stuff specifically was that and then what was even more fucked up about the article was it said um, and, and, and I'm not going to quote exactly. She also wrote into another podcast and I heard this, but essentially what the woman said, we did not sleep together. It alluded that we slept together. It didn't say that I was in an open relationship, but we didn't sleep together. Um, she told me she didn't want to uh, uh, sleep together. And I was like, great. No problem. Um, she's like, I don't want or I don't want it to go further than that. You know? Okay. So I was like, cool. Even if you change your mind, we're not going to do it. Got it. And then in the article, in the article about me being a predator, it's like, I felt so safe and, and, and it was a great night. And I was like, this sounds like an article about me being a good dude. And then it said, but then weeks later, she heard on the podcast that she, uh, she was just a quote road fuck. And then Jezebel in parentheses, this one author, author from Jezebel in parentheses said, Jezebel could not find the clip. Right. Because it doesn't fucking exist because I'm not going to call someone a road fuck next to my wife on my feminist podcast. Not only that, you're not going to say it if you didn't even have sex with them. And we didn't have sex. Right. So this is just, they just decided to take this characterization by this one woman. And that's and, it. And, and flavor the article. Yes. With it. It's and very unfair. No. Right? And dude, like. So it, is this punishment, you think, for you because you somehow or another. So that's why it becomes easy. And, and just to be like incredibly clear, like if this woman was like hurt by that, like that sucks, man. I've been burnt by girls. But hold it on a second. Sucks. You didn't do anything. If no. she didn't, if she was hurt because you didn't eventually become her girlfriend. Right. Or your, her boyfriend, rather. That's just on her. Sure. Um, Unless you're mischaracter. No, 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 mischaracterizing no, no. I'm just, it. I'm trying to be. You're trying to be nice. I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, and I assume she is probably, you know, I mean, she's probably taken out of context as well. There's a real problem with writing things about people. And one of the real problems with writing things about people is they don't get a chance to respond in real time to the things you're saying. So you establish a narrative and then you keep going with it. You write paragraph after paragraph with no no one responding to that. Yeah, and months later, no I, counter to I it. saw like it, 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 the, the, the woman who wrote the article, like there was a request in my like other inbox and facebook that like you don't even see and like for a comment so like i mean i yeah, got she did reach out um but at that point i was uh I, at that point i was literally googling ways to kill myself so i'm like i did i did not get back so to you her. were googling ways to kill yourself for real yeah for real so well just to like why put, put a cap on that article so here's what happened and this goes to your your question before because i had called so many people sexist because i had sort of made my almost career by that um it was fucking fun man when people heard about this like and you see the headlines and this is another like problem with like clickbait journalism the headlines look like i was fucking accused of rape there was a uh one article that used the word sexual harassment sexual misconduct was in all the headlines what is that i have no fucking That's a idea weird one, cause i've seen that one about people connected to harvey weinstein yeah saying, like about ben affleck they called it sexual misconduct Dude, like, I, what is, what does that mean? Like but doing something that you don't think they should do? Well, it's really creepy. It's legal and... And I almost lost uh, a job. I did just lose a gig um, because when you Google me, it's like sexual misconduct stuff. And like, that's really uh, scary. And again, I don't want to be like, you know who the real victim of Harvey Weinstein is? Jamie Kilstein. Right. But like... Uh, Let me just stop you right here. If you say like one more time, my fucking head's going to explode. Oh, dude, I get comments like that. It's brutal. Is it brutal? Is it yeah, as bad brutal. as... All right, I'm going to... I just want you to slow it down. I'm going to... Use it every now and then. Slip this coffee you're, over you're here. You're breaking the like... The like meter. I'm going to... I do it too, man. A lot of people do it. It's an easy one to do. I'm going to switch to water. But that word is a... a it's an um. It's a... People use it as um. I know. I know. It's okay. I do it too. Yeah. We all do it. But it's just... You, it's nice to know. Yeah. No. I, but it's also a very progressive thing. Like there's a way to, like that people it's, talk <laughs> like when they're really progressive that like you don't hear like left wing people talk. I uh, keep getting fucked over by the progressives. But, even but with it my is. Speech. It's, it's a way of appearing. Um, what's the word? Submissive or innocent. Non yeah. Innocent, I get it. Passive. Yeah. It's not a it's not an aggressive way of communicating. All right. What if I said like, but like I kept like <laughs> punching the table like as I did it. Like I'm going to fucking like <laughs> let you know like 
<laughs> Go to like step to me, just smash a paps uh, can. Um, so, so, so you got a bunch of people that were upset at you because you had embodied the quintessential allies. So it was there. Nobody had a reason to like me or to defend me. On one half of the Twitter sphere, you had progressives who thought I was a sexual creep. And then on the other half, you have comedy fans who are like, fuck this dude. He's right. the one who called everyone a sexist. You don't need to read the article. If you see a headline, I mean, God, I attacked so many people without fucking reading the articles. Right, of course. There are people yeah. to this day that would come up on Citizen Radio that I don't know why I was mad at. I would just figure out the story as we were covering it and be like, yep, fuck that guy, I guess. Yeah, of course. And... Uh, so nobody, there was no reason to root for me. There wasn't a strong enough fan base. It wasn't like if, you know, a, a bigger comic gets accused of something. Well, he has thousands or millions of fans and then this small community who are accusing him of something. I had sort of nobody. And when I burnt all the bridges in, in comedy and, you know, I never just showed up at clubs to do sets and stuff like that. I just had this audience and sort of thought I could never get fired, you know, um, like when when Ali and I sort of became more platonic before the open relationship, I mean, there were days it was it was so, uh, you know, I mean, I would sleep on the couch, but there were days I would go on the road and I would not cheat and I would go back to the hotel and jerk off. And like my orgasm was better because I'm like, I saved Citizen Radio. Like I was trying so hard not to not to do anything like that. And so anyway, I lost yeah, there was no one to root for me. I just had this small audience. The small audience either thinks I'm a predator or they're too nervous to say anything. Well, the, you fit the quintessential. You, you, there's a classic view of what a male feminist is. And that classic yeah. view is a sneaky guy that is yeah. like getting in tight with women and saying all the things they really want to hear. And the the classic story is that those women are never attracted to that guy anyway and want up and go and fuck some jock. Some alpha guy. I mean, that's literally what happens. There's like, yeah, you don't say like, do you? But it's just this thing that people, there's, it's just, well, it's a cliche. And I, mean, I totally, and I also think it was the uh, homophobic politician who sucks a dick. Right, right? sure, Where they're thing. like, yeah. ha. Right, the super religious guy who uh turns out to actually be gay like ted what is that guy's name <sighs> ted the, the, the guy from colorado can we just say cruise and start a uproar yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you probably ted could Cruz, right it was you definitely ted right. Cruz. uh yeah and so ted haggard ted haggard yes yeah and oh, that's right you have a bit about him and who didn't yeah right and so this <laughs> is what happens yeah this is sort of the the problem with acting like you don't have flaws. And right. I, I always did. I thought on the show, my favorite parts of my show were when I talked about uh, depression or alcoholism and, and, and we would get emails in from people who, you know, it said it really helped them. And I wanted to talk so much more about that stuff mm -hmm. because I, I, I do think it's important to examine your flaws. But on a political level, I held myself up as like in, in in, in untouchable. Well, I think you were doing essentially the same thing that you were talking about doing on Twitter, where you're addicted to this positive response and you're addicted to saying these things about people and attacking people. There, there's, there's a, it's a real problem on the left. 